Of course, you're looking at the brand new flagship killing OnePlus 7 Pro, arguably the most feature packed and most expensive OnePlus device to date. That said, even being the most feature stocked, there are a few compromises, but does it warrant the jump in price? This is our review of the OnePlus 7 Pro. Compromise is one area that OnePlus fans have dealt with for years. Even with genuine flagship specs at a ridiculously low price, certain features have still been reserved for the premium tier of the market. With the OnePlus 7 Pro, the company has sought to change that, and for the most part, I think they've genuinely succeeded. Let me reiterate what everyone else is saying, this is an out-and-out -out flagship at a slightly reduced price. Internally, the 7 Pro is right up there with the very best in the business. Of course, you probably already do know the specs, but the Snapdragon 855 works in tandem with 6, 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM and 128 or 256 gigabytes of non-expandable internal storage. Of course, it's worth noting that this is the first commercial smartphone with the UFS 3.0 storage too, so that should improve read and write speeds. Now, of course, those internals prove integral to the overall experience as OnePlus has stretched out their display, added a curve, and then decided that we need a super high refresh rate display, and the result is simply gorgeous. It's one of the best displays on the market by some margin. A proper edge-to-edge -edge 90Hz refresh rate display sans notch is one of the 7 Pro's massive highlights. It is difficult to do the display justice in video, but it is one of the standouts of the entire OnePlus 7 Pro package. It even enhances the feeling of speed and fluidity that OnePlus, and by extension, Oxygen OS is known for. But more on this later. You'll notice there's no screen blemish. Because the 7 Pro adopts the pop-up camera style, it's actually a lot neater in practice than I had anticipated. And for non-selfie takers, it's a solid workaround to prevent the display from being affected by notches and cutouts. It can pop up to unlock your device too, although it doesn't include any face scanning tech. Plus, it also includes drop protection, where the camera retracts should it fall or slip out of your hands. I found in practice it's more than fast enough, popping up in 0.53 seconds, and it really doesn't stick out the top of the device as much as you'd imagine. Thankfully, the in-display fingerprint reader is also similarly quick. It's much, much better than the previous 6T, thanks to a bigger optical sensor, and I've genuinely had no real issues with its performance. Quickly back up to that top bezel, and this now includes an elongated earpiece that now works in tandem with a bottom firing speaker to give you stereo sound, which is probably about time. I also do find that the EP is still a little bit frustrating for calls, as I do have to move it around to hear callers, but it is much louder than before. For all intents and purposes, make no mistake, this is a very big handset, and one that is hard to use one-handed. The slim side bezels and sleek back can be a little bit of a hindrance if you don't grip it with both hands. Protection will be a concern, which leads us to today's video sponsor. Hey, we get it, you probably already know that dbrand offers a ton of premium skins for all kinds of phones and devices, including the OnePlus 7 Pro but adding a little flair might be right up your alley. The custom skins still come in an array of colors and finishes, from my favorite, the white marble finish, to the soft touch matrix and honeycomb swarm designs. Each and every dbrand skin is laser cut precisely to your device, quick and easy to apply, plus they not only protect your OnePlus 7 Pro from daily use and abuse, but they also give your device a unique look while giving extra grip. Head to the link in the description to get hands-on with a skin for your device, and thanks to dbrand for sponsoring all of our OnePlus 7 launch coverage. Even without a skin or simply caseless, the OnePlus 7 Pro looks gorgeous in all lighting. While I am a fan of the Nebula option, the limited almond colour that is coming soon also does look stunning, whilst the Mirror Grey offers a more classic look for those that don't want a garish smartphone. With the Nebula Blue version, certain lighting catches the colour shift of light blue to deep purple on the back of the 7 Pro, and it's a striking handset that will no doubt catch attention. Oxygen OS 9.5 literally flies in day-to-day, -day, which makes all the difference to the everyday experience. It's clean, well thought out, and adds some noticeable tweaks over stock that make it such a popular skin. Fast and smooth performance is most definitely achieved. The 90Hz screen, insane specs, and UFS 3.0 storage makes the OnePlus 7 Pro feel a step ahead of the competition. In day-to-day, -day, apps load instantly, switching puts zero strain on the device, and the overall experience is about as good as it gets on the Android side of the fence. I must admit though, it is such a powerful phone that I would be seriously disappointed if there were any noticeable slowdowns. That said, it isn't without issues though, as I found the battery slightly disappointing despite having a massive 4000 mAh cell. I barely scraped the 5 hour screen on time figure on most days, even when turning down the screen resolution to Full HD+, it didn't seem to offer any extra benefits. That means you probably won't see screen on time reaching the same level as a OnePlus 6T, but the inclusion of 30W warp charging gives you a blast of battery in no time. 
The power brick of course is much larger than the older dash charger, but that is to be expected given the increased power throughput. I'm still disappointed that the 7 Pro still hasn't added wireless charging given it has a glass back, but warp charge is still a solid compromise. Compromise of course is still one area we've become accustomed to with regard to the OnePlus camera performance, and finally getting a major overhaul in the camera is a huge deal. The 7 Pro does have a good camera, but it isn't superb, especially the Nightscape 2.0 modes. I've found they've had a massive improvement, but it's still a little bit behind the industry pace. That said, images are much sharper, have good dynamic range and contrast. It stacks up against most at the same price point in good lighting, but in dingy or dim scenarios, it just isn't quite up to scratch. OnePlus has worked hard on the camera, and I will say the app is still very well organized, laid out and easy to navigate throughout. Video modes too are plentiful and the addition of OIS and EIS means silky smooth video even when moving. I must admit there is some noticeable jello effects if you really move around and video can be a little bit oversaturated at times but I must admit it does stack well up against the competition. So with all that in mind who is the OnePlus 7 Pro for? I think for hardcore fans it's a tough one. The 7 Pro is a fantastic device that still manages to have a few compromises that similarly priced handsets don't seem to cut corners on. Things like an IP rating and wireless charging spring to mind. That said, those devices don't have that amazing 90Hz display, arguably best in class performance, gorgeous design and good support over the next coming few years. Oh, and of course the haptics themselves, they're insanely good too. At around $700, it is a quantum leap in price and overall package, so you'll have to balance out which is the best option for you. Wait for the OnePlus 7, which looks an interesting if uninspired upgrade over the OnePlus 6T, or bite the bullet and get the top tier 7 Pro. Of course, we'd love to know what you think. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and then be sure to subscribe to see our full review of the slightly less publicized OnePlus 7 when the device becomes available later this year. But as always, this is Damien for 95Google saying thanks again for watching, and I will speak to you later.